Hi friends. Um, I'm going to do a different kind of video today. Normally I do craft stuff, but uh, it's time for me to do my nails. Um, uh, part of my self-care pr uh, process. And I thought I have had such a hard time. I have had horrible, battled horrible nails my whole life. Peeling, uh, weak, bendy, um, just can't have fake nails because they pop right off because my nails peel like shale. And my whole life, uh, bite, I bit my nails when I was much younger. Um, actually, until probably I was 45. <clears throat> uh, maybe between 40 and 45, I broke that habit finally. And I'm going to talk about, um, I did something a few months back that just reset my nails. They were horrible again. And um, it's been a process growing them back out. And I thought... I know there's other people that struggle with this, like I'm not the only one. And uh, I thought I'd share, because I am, as you can see, growing them back out. Oh, excuse the scratch. Yard work. Uh, I am growing them back out, and they're doing okay, um, again. But it's been a process, and when you have a setback, that makes you start from scratch. And I literally had to, the nails were so messed up, like halfway down the nail bed that it took a couple months before I could, I had to just keep them to the quick, uh, to the quick for a couple months. And that was frustrating. Uh, but it's what I needed to do. And now I'm able to grow them out a little bit and they'll grow and continue to grow um, from the things that I have learned over my life. Um, so I'm just going to share some stuff and uh, take it for what it is. I've tried a lot of products and there's a lot of professional YouTubers out there talking about what works and stuff. But the reality is if you have healthy nails and you don't battle this, you don't understand, <laughs> I mean, you know, the, uh, the, the shoulds of it, but you don't know the reality of it. Right. And then number two, not every product is going to work the same on every person because we're all made up different chemicals. You know, we're all made up of, and where one thing might work on one person, something else might work on someone else. So I'm just going to share what I've used, share my experiences with them and you guys, and what I've learned and you guys can pick and choose if any of this information is helpful. So let's get going. <laughs> so I'm going to start with, um, the reason I knew it was time to do some nail care today is I have really hard skin around the edges of my nails, okay? And you can see right here I have an old wound. But if I get something like this right here, I will pick it. It's a, it's a trigger for me. I will pick it. I will pull it until it comes all the way off. Usually tears part of my cuticle and then I bleed and then I have a wound that takes forever to heal. Um, I have really sticky cuticles. Some people have easier cuticles. I have really sticky dry cuticles. And so that's a factor. And then I also suffer from anxiety, apparently. Um, nail biting is an anxiety uh, thing. And I had it my whole childhood. I had it, like I said, into my 40s. And um, I had to do some habit replacements in order to stop that. And I'll talk about that as I go. So, um, when I'm doing my nails, like the first thing is, um, where do I want to start? I keep, well, let's go with the products. Okay. So there's a difference between hardener and strengtheners, right? And for me, with the peely nails and my nails, like they blister and peel so bad like if and if I bump it I also know I don't have any nail polish on right now so if I bump these and you can see I do have a couple blisters in there if I bump these um, I'll get a uh, a blister and it will peel that will form a, a, a folding place and then I have to cut it or I'll just pick it until it breaks because it bug when they're folded and they have that crease in the nail they bug me. I can't, there's nothing you can do about that. It's already, it's just a broken nail that hasn't fallen off basically because one layer is still attached, right? So it's better to just clip it, file it down, start from scratch. Um, so it, it, to prevent that sort of thing, I try to keep like a, at least a clear coat on it. 
and one of the things that I um, have tried, I'm just going to bring all these like hardeners. I have tried so many hardeners. Like I am sure you guys have seen all this stuff. Like this one worked, this one, I, barely, right? It's okay. It, it was an okay product, okay? Sully Hansen's nail hardener doesn't work at all for me. Um, it peels right off. Uh, uh, I found this set, which I don't know. I, I, I liked in the beginning. So you do a, um, launch pad. You do three layers. You do this launch pad, you do the makeover, and then you do the top coat. And, um, it gives them just kind of a pearly color. It's not green when it's on. It just gives them a pearly color. It worked okay as a strengthener, but it's not the best product I've used. So as you can see, I've only used half of it because I just went back to the old one that I like the most, which I'll get to in a minute. Recently, I tried this $20 bottle of Opti Nail Envy because it um, is made for sensitive and peeling nails. And of course I watched a YouTuber and they're like, Opti Nail Envy, Opti Nail Envy, and I tried it. And again, it's an okay product. But by far, the favorite thing that I have found that really works on my nails is Perfect Formula. Um, I guess it's Perfect Nails is the manufacturer. These um, brighten, which when you put them on, it really does like change the hue of your nail and it brightens. It takes any yellowing out for some reason. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple. There's pink gel. There's ruby gel. Um, there's clear gel. Uh, but it's a strengthener. And these... I attribute to me being able to grow my nails out. It works. It For some reason, this formula does not peel. Like, like, okay, the reason this is okay is it works the first few days, but this does, this peels off within a week. Like, it does not last a full week. This will last over a week. This will last a week and a half to two weeks if I ignore them. I don't like to ignore them that long because other things happen to my nails. I need to be a weekly self manicure. Okay. And I don't know if you, if you have nails like mine, like I've tried the, all, all the different things I've tried, even acrylics and stuff. They pop off in a week or two. People talk about, Oh, I can go three or four weeks with acrylic. I could barely go two weeks because the top layer of my nail will just come off with the nail. So it, it just doesn't work. So finding something that does work is amazing. I really like perfect nail formula. Um, it has been a game changer for me. Um, another thing, like, uh, so using a clear coat is important. Um, using a, oh, let's go back to, because that's really top coats. Let's look, talk about moisturizer. So one of the key things for me, one of the factors for me is I have this really thick, dry skin, especially at the corners. And, um... You know, I, I've clipped it. I've gotten t away from just clipping off my whole cuticle because it just grows back thicker. And I know that that's the poxum nail fold or whatever. And your cuticle is the sticky stuff underneath. But regardless, the edge of that skin is dry and I pick at it. So I need to keep it moist. Now I have found, you know, there's lots of recipes for making like jojoba nail oils and stuff like that. Um, but I have found the, the best things for me. You're going to laugh. Um, I have a better bottle of it, a newer bottle where you can see. Here, let me look at this. Um, this stuff, I'll just swap it out. Okay. Gold Bond Cracked Skin Relief Fill and Protected Cream. This also, this has been a game changer for me. I keep this in my purse. I keep this on my body at all times. And I constantly rub it into my nails as often as I think about it. This has been the best thing for getting the skin around my nails. I used, before I found this, I used to use um, triple antibiotic ointment because it would keep it moisturized. And um, especially if I get, like, if I start picking at any of this loose skin here, which I will do, and um, that's why I need to stay weekly manicures on top of it because that's a trigger for me. Um, so I, when I found this, this is a cream, 
Whereas, you know, triple antibiotic ointments like Greasy, this is not. This is a cream and it disappears right into your nail. You don't even, it, it's amazing, okay? And you don't even feel it. And it instantly, instantly, like I can feel a difference in my nail already. That, that skin around there, instantly. Um, I keep a bottle of this on my desk. And I keep a bottle in my emergency purse nail kit, which I'll go over in a minute. You guys, this is going to be a medium to long video because I just want to share all the information because I know there are people out there suffering from the same problem. There's got to be. I'm not the only person. I also have all these different just, <coughs> excuse me, nail cuticle treatments, all different kinds. And I have one of these various things sitting at every place that I would sit in my house. So I have one sitting on my desk. I have one sitting um, in my spot in the living room where I watch TV. I have one um, you know, wherever. I have one at my nightstand. Wherever I spend time in my house, I have something to rub into my nails constantly. That, if I don't do that, it, I'm, I'm not going to grow my nails. If I do that, I can grow my nails, okay? Something I, I learned um, about the oils. So dry nails seem to be a factor, right? And I've learned that on YouTube and whatnot. I found this uh, Barefoot Scientist um, Inner Strength Nail Oil. Uh, cuticle Renewal Drops. It, this is amazing. Uh, you can see I've gotten halfway through it and I will replace it. But I have this by my bathroom sink. And every time I wash my hands... I just add one drop of oil, right? And I go, I put the the thing, the dropper here, 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 here. I don't even do a whole drop. I just take one drop and I just smear it. And then I take the nails and I rub them together like this. So you're not walking around with oily, greasy hands because nobody can do that. But if you do that little bit amount, it works still, but yet you are more prone to do it every time you wash your hands every time and um, because the water strips the moisture and stuff out of your nails and that replaces it um, not just the skin around your nails but your actually nails and underneath too um, that's by my bathroom this one I got from perfect nail formula and I actually bought a kit last time and it had a bunch of different stuff and I found this in it and I really like it and I will replace full-size bottle of this because this is a daily moisturizer goes on with like a little paintbrush it's the same thing it's an oil and it sits on my desk and it's a thick oil and it really is nice to just wipe around there rub it in keep typing okay um those are my moisturizers now I moisturize as often as I can I do it in the car while I'm sitting at a stoplight with this because I keep this in my purse um I do it with this after I wash my hands I do it with this while I'm sitting by the tv I do it with this while I'm out, you know, sitting, I work from home, so while I'm sitting at my desk typing. Um, moisturize, moisturize, moisturize. I can't stress that enough. Whatever your trigger is, and I know that because I know the dry skin around my finger like that, I will start picking at, I will ruin my hand, they'll be bleeding, it will be horrible, like you can see this one's healing. Um, if, I, if you address what your triggers are, you can change the habits. You can also change the, the fundamental condition of the problem. So, but you have to identify what causes the problem before you can ch uh, change it, right? Um, what else? I, I was going to do a manicure because it is what triggered me doing this video is it's time for me to do a manicure, but I'm not going to make you sit through this because I just want to share all the different products and that's going to take long enough. So I will show you though. Um, in my toolbox, I should say, I keep um, this this little container sits on my desk. Um, in between meetings, whatever, I have my acetone, and I love this. This is just a Walmart, and it's nail polish remover, but I've used this up, and this is actually, I just refill it, because this pump here... I just put a cut. I don't use a cotton ball. I use a cotton round. I put it on top. I go pump, 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 and it, it's um, it's so easy to use. And then when I'm it's empty, I just take off the top, 
refill it from a giant bottle. I don't have to deal with trying to get a cotton ball in that giant bottle and making a mess. This works so much better and it saves me money. And of course it's just a Walgreens, it wasn't, well, Walgreens um, product, but the, the dispenser is amazing. So I'm going to keep this forever and ever until it breaks. Um, I've had it about a year and it's in really good condition and I use it weekly. So the other thing in my nail kit, very important, these, a set of these. I don't use like nail clippers or anything like, or scissors. I use these and I just gently clip the tiny bits of hanging skin. I used to clip all the way around and if my nails are really, really, really like thick, like the skin, I've ignored them for a few weeks or something, which I don't do anymore, but I used to have to like clip all the way around. I don't have to do that anymore because I condition so much and take care of them. So, but I do have to get rid of like the hangy stuff because I will pick at the hangy stuff and make myself bleed, which we've already established. Um, another thing in my desk manicure kit is this little art spritz bottle. This is supposed to be Mr. for doing crafts and I keep it full of alcohol um, so that if I'm moisturizing all day long and I go to paint my nails, you have to get that moisturizer off the nails or the uh, nail polish won't stick to the nail, right? So this is just a little mister. I miss, miss, miss. Wipe the nails clean and then I can uh, go ahead and paint. Uh, um, let's see, what else? Oh, nail files. Let's talk nail files. So, nail files. Nail files are so important. Um, hopefully, if you have nail issues at all, you need glass, crystal glass, whatever you want to call it, nail files. Um, my first set, again, came from Perfect Nails. I've been using these for about two years. Um, I have found, though, just leaving them loose in my purse or whatever, I have to have a really fine grit. Not all crystal nail files are created equally. I've had to throw some away, brand new ones, because they're so coarse. I can't use a normal emery board on my fingernails because it just tears them up. Um, my fingernails are so thin and wimpy and layered that it, it just tears them up. So I have to have a very, I used to use a buffer to file my nails, okay, if that tells you anything. But I find that when they roll around in your purse, the, they go smooth so quickly because they're not very coarse, they're, you know, um, very fine. So um, now I only get the ones that come in the case. This was a really nice a set that came from, I got recently from Amazon, came in a set of three. And they're perfect. They were highly recommended uh, with reviews and they're perfect. And I don't know where my third one is, it's somewhere on my desk. But like I said, I have them all over. So this big one is in my case. This tiny one is in my purse at all times. I pulled stuff out to show you. Um, this one I like to use also not just on the end of my nails, but on the skin next to it when it gets really tough and I don't want to cut it. Sometimes I try just buffing it down a little bit. Sometimes I do have to cut it if it gets too thick. Sometimes just breaking it down a little with the file will smooth it out and I can stand it. Again, it's it has to do with it being my trigger and me being able to grow my nails, right? So the other thing is like I talked about I used a buffer. I have I do not use I when I was younger, much, much younger, I used to use a buffer to try to get rid of the blisters on my nails. You know, once they start blistering and peeling, I try to use a buffer. And what I discovered um, is I don't do anything that is going to traumatize the actual nail itself, okay? So nothing happens to this part of the nail. If um, I get a blister and it peels, I try to get the peel off just gently with my finger. I'll take my little sander and try to get maybe the edge off, but more likely I will cut it because once that blister starts, it'll just keep going back. So if I can cut the blister off, I will do that and zero out the nail and start over again because it's just going to be a quicker grow out than if I just keep allowing it to travel. But this is um, the reality of my nails. And again, 
you know, um, knowing that, cause I can feel this, this is shiny. This is healthy that I have no nail polish on. I don't know if you can see how shiny they are. It's because they're healthy. Okay. I had a short break. Um, I had to talk to my husband about something. So I'm going to come back and try to remember where I was. Oh, I was talking about nail buffer. Yeah. So you can see my nails are healthy. I do not break that seal across my nail with a buffer. Yeah, I do have some ridges. They fill in when you put a top coat on. Um, it, it's better um, for my nails just to let them be as natural as possible. Let's see if I can. I'm getting a little close. There we go. Um, what else have we got here? So I've got that. I've got, oh, okay. So this blue cross, um, cuticle remover. So the cuticle is not the edge of the skin here, but the white, do I have any, I use this stuff pretty often. So yeah, I have a little bit here cause mine is super sticky and hard. So I don't know if you can see it, but when you push that back, there is some white gunk on my nail there. It's the cuticle actually, and it's like glue. And I used to try to use uh, Sally Hansen's cuticle remover. And I'm gonna just adjust the screen a little bit. Come on guys, interesting. Why doesn't it want to? Hmm. Okay, well, I'm gonna move you back a little. There you go. Um, I tried using the Sally Hansen stuff for a while. And it never really worked. Like it just didn't work. And I'd end up scraping my nails to get the cuticle off, which does damage to the top of it, right? So I saw a bunch of people recommended this Blue Cross stuff. And it actually works pretty well, like almost instantaneous. You just, but I do one hand at a time. I put it on this hand, I get the cuticle off, and I go wash it off because it is very drying, is one of the problems. But it works really well like you let it sit there for 30 seconds and then I can use depending on how hard the cuticle is I have two options I can use I prefer to use this rubber uh, push I don't even like the wood one I use this rubber because it's so flexible it's not going to damage my nail push it I have this end I can scrape it a little bit if I need to if it's really bad I have this metal one like if they use at the salon and I can scrape it with that and get it off and I go in little circles right after the the blue cross is on I go in little tiny circles and get and you'll see the cuticle just come off onto here and go wash it off before it dries up your nails and then do the other hand okay so that's what's in my kit so um and honestly I rarely get to just sit and do this whole process because I'm, and we'll go into that next. Very particular about the, the, the prep work that we're all talking about here. The fight, and, and then I shape the nail, the filing, the skin trimming, the cuticle removal, the nail plush removal, all that can be done in one sitting, right? Um, but now we're gonna talk to the painting. And so I'll put just for general maintenance, I'll put just one of these clear coat strengtheners on that I really like. Um, if I want to paint, paint my nails. I've used a lot of nail polishes too. Um, I tried this Oppie nail lacquer, uh, nail envy stuff, and it just, it's thick and goopy and I, I just don't care for it, which is a shame because this, this Oppie stuff is like $20 a bottle, right? So I am disappointed in this. I've tried it a couple times. But again, every person's nails is different and this stuff is supposed to be really good for your nails. So, whereas it wasn't good for me, I would recommend other people give it a try because my nails are made up a different chemical. Like everybody's nails are made out of the same basis, right? But each person is a little different. 
and that's what causes people to have hard nails or soft nails or whatever, right? This doesn't work with my particular nail. It probably works great because the reviews are magnificent with other people's nails. Give it a whirl. Um, I used to love Revlon and Gel Envy. It was nice and thin. The other thing is too, it's a texture thing. This is very thick. I do not like thick stuff. Um, it's opaque, it, uh, kind of a creamy, and it just goes on really thick. I just didn't care for it. Um, I like thin stuff that you can build up. I used to use the Revlon Gel Envy stuff. I, I believe they discontinued this because I can't find it anywhere. Um, um, I still have my top coats. I have some of the undercoats, but they've dried up over the years because I've used it for a long time. Um, so the next best thing that I've used is China Glaze. And it's so funny because this goes on so thin. You can, it's almost translucent, but you do after two layers, which you always want to do layers, right? To get a good, nice, um, professional looking manicure. You want to do layers, thin layers, build it up and it's gorgeous. And then I love to take like a solid color and then just hit it with a, cause a glitter, I don't care for a glitter alone that you can see through unless I've got a solid color under it. So I'll often do that. And there's something about glitter nail polish that just like, it, it, it makes my nails twice as strong. I don't know what it is. <laughs> it, it, it's like a little shield on my nails. So I do enjoy a glitter. Um, if I want to be fancy, I'll do something like this. Um, I love this China Glaze brand. But then I will top it with something like this. There's a Sally Hansen Miracle Gel top coat. Then again, um, Perfect Nail Clear Gel Coat or Perfect Nail Favorite Top Coat, which I also love Perfect Nails. So any kind of top coat. Now, people will say, I see on uh, YouTube all the time people talking about and this is where I go into, I can't do it in one sitting. People talk about, oh, I'll just, you know, wait five, 10 minutes between layers and put on another layer. I cannot do that. That is a sure file fire way for it to peel right off my nails. It can't be dry. It has to be cured. And um, the difference is dry is kind of dry on the top. And yeah, you can go ahead and go in with another surface. Cured is it is dry all the way from the top to the bottom and it adhered to your nail. Um, that keeps the layers thin. They dry quick if they're thin. So I usually will wait a half hour between each layer, which means it's an evening. We sit and watch TV on a Friday or Saturday night if we don't have plans or what. I'll even do it in the campground. I don't give a hoot. So I'm um, sitting by the campfire and I'll just do my nails and um, a layer. Oops give it a half hour, make sure it's good and dry. Like you can wipe at it and nothing happens really hard. Right. Um, then go in with the next layer and then just build them up. Probably like two layers of this, a layer of this, then a layer of a top coat, maybe a second one, depending on which top coat I'm using. Okay. And then moisturize, moisturize, moisturize. Okay. So now, uh, something we didn't talk about, I keep an emergency because my nails, I, I, I am, it is a, a, not a goal, but it is a, a major self-care item. It is something that is important to me to keep my nails clean and healthy and just not bitten down and bloody. Okay. And in order for them not to be bitten down bloody, I have to go the opposite extreme and really f make sure I focus on them every week. I have this plastic case that I keep in my purse at all times. It is my emergency nail kit. I keep in this nail kit, um, a nail file. And this is another perfect nail in a sheath. Another one of these uh, rubber things I can push about my cuticle and you can technically use this on your nails. If I've got something bugging me, I'll put this on first and then do a little push back and at least it'll get me through till I'm at home. I'll do this if I'm sitting in traffic or whatever, right? Or um, at a stoplight or something. 
trim off anything that's hanging because if I don't trim it off with one of these, I will rip it with my teeth. There's one right there. And I will rip it all the way around and it will bleed and it will be ugly for weeks while it heals. So I just try to pay attention to that. I always have these travel uh, nail polish removers in here because if my nail get if the nail polish does start to lift and peel, I need to get it off or I will pick at it. It's another trigger. I mean, I'm a nail picker, so anything I can do. Also, if my nails get stuff under them really bad, like if I start like futzing with them, I will just go into any bathroom. I'll do it at work. I'll do it in a public bathroom. I don't care. I keep a nail brush in my little plastic kit. I will use whatever soap is on hand and I will just clean my nails underneath, around the cuticles, whatever, and make sure they're clean and that just like refreshes them and I will leave them alone. Weird, but it works. So this will, and then it can go back in here because this is plastic and it won't mess up my purse. Um, I keep a second tiny baby nail file just in a pocket in my purse. So if I took this out because I was doing something with it, like this video, and I forgot to put it back in, I would always at least bare minimal have this. And one of these I keep in my purse pocket separate from this. I know it's obsessive, but this is what has worked guys. I mean, if you're a nail biter or you battle unhealthy nails and you can't do the pretty fancy nail stuff because it doesn't work for you, I'm telling you, that's me. You're, you're in my boat and I'm telling you, the workarounds that I found that work for me. Try what works for you, but this is what works for me. Now, initially, like I said, I bit my nails from the time I was born. <laughs> I don't know how, what age I started, right? I've always bitten my nails until I was in my 40s. Um, I learned it was an anxiety thing. Um, and I also knew I didn't want to do it anymore. I really didn't want to do it anymore. And there's no Nail Biting Anonymous to join. So I had to find, uh, researched how to change habits. First thing is becoming aware of the habit you're doing. I do have this um, nail bite, nail growth, sinful colors. Um, it's just a really gross oil kind of thing that you can put on your nails. So if you put your nail in your mouth, you will taste this. It's not poisonous or anything, but it tastes horrible and you will take your nail back out of your mouth. It's not about deterring you. I mean, it says, you know, the whole idea is it's going to deter you. Nothing's going to deter you if you really want to bite your nails. What it does do is it allows you to become aware of how often you put your nails in your mouth. And that's another thing. If you want to grow your nails out and you have horrible nails, you've got to keep them out of your mouth because the acid and the moisture in your mouth eats away at them, right? So you need to keep them out of your mouth. Um, this is a good way to do it. Another thing I did to break the habit was I, I enlisted my husband and I said, um, I didn't want to bite my nails anymore. And he started saying, every time I started to bite my nails, he still does it. If I'm picking at the skin or anything like in my mouth, he'll say, stop biting your nails. And I appreciate the feedback. Sometimes I'll tell him to mind his own business that I need to get the skin off the corner. I'm not biting my nails. I'm getting rid of the skin and he'll chuckle and say whatever, but he doesn't stop because he knows this is a thing that is important to me. And sometimes I say thank you and I put my hands down and I get my kit out of my purse and I even just sometimes even just filing your nail, doing something else. Like if I'm biting it and I don't have a clipper, I can at least start filing the nails it's an anxiety thing so if i choose to shape my nail or maybe file some of the dry skin around my nails or massage my nails with some cream it is replacing the habit of biting my nails and i can lean into that when i'm feeling anxious <clears throat> if you battle anxiety you know that a lot of the habits that you form coping skills good and bad are very difficult to overcome later so instead of trying to just say, I'm going to stop biting my nails, I took an approach of, I'm going to do something good for me instead of bad for me. And having a kit with options with me at all times, whether it's on the table next to me, um, in my purse, 
at my workstation. Um, having an option to do something good rather than sit there and chew away at your nails makes a difference. Becoming aware of the habit. You can't change a habit till you become aware of the habit and then you can replace the habit with a better habit, if that makes sense. So instead of just trying to get rid of the habit, instead of a piece of hang skin triggering me to bite my nails, the piece of hang skin will trigger me to get my trimmers out and then put some oil on and really just nurture my hands rather than chewing them to death and making them bleed. Um, this is a long video. I hope to goodness that it was worth your time. Uh, I hope this helps somebody and um, gives you some input. Uh, again, don't take my word on any of these project products. Um, the key is keeping your skin healthy keeping your skin moisturized, um, trying different things until you find what works for you, and learning to love on yourself instead of tearing yourself down. Emotionally, physically, biting your nails, you know, all of it. So if anybody has any comments or you have any questions about like this stuff you can find on Amazon like it's I, I'm not gonna link stuff because I don't make I, that's not why I make videos um I just want to share what I've learned you know because I'm in my 50s now and I've lived a life and we all have our battles and, and this is one that I am proud to say like oh I will say okay so the thing that made me have to reset and start over again one last thing I tried this stuff, it's formaldehyde or whatever, it's like the stuff you put on your nails, um, you can buy it online, it's very expensive, it comes in this tiny little bottle, orange stuff, and people recommend it, and it's, what it's supposed to do is, so your nails made of cross hatches, and I think people who have nails that blister and whatnot, these cross hatches are kind of loose. And this stuff is supposed to bind them together and make your nail hard, but as I mentioned earlier, hardeners make my nails worse not better I need strengtheners and you have to play with it and really become aware of what you're using and how it re your nails respond to it to just determine what works best for you right but that particular stuff freaking expensive like this little tiny bottle this big I'm not kidding I threw it away um cost $28 <laughs> Ugh. But I was going to try it because I thought, mm, maybe they'll go faster, maybe they won't break as easily, you know, because like I said, I get those bins and that's it. They're toast. I have to cut it all the way down and start to scratch. Um, highly recommended online. Um, it is, people say, oh, it's formaldehyde. It's not. It's missing a chemical in it that makes formaldehyde. It's like a, a, a step away from that, so it's supposed to be safe for you. It literally, my nails came off in peels all the way luckily the directions you only use it on halfway down your nail so instead of four months to grow out it only took two months but my nails just were to the quick for months and I couldn't figure out what was wrong and I realized it was they started really just went horribly wrong um, when I started using that so I threw it out but again read reviews for other people so maybe it works for you did not work for me but that's why I had to reset it and it happens like you you're gonna and the reason I point that out is not because I don't want you to go try that product like I said might work for you what I the reason I'm sharing is because I don't want you to feel like like my nails were out to here they were gorgeous and and I might insert because I did take pictures of what they look like when I realized what was happening and they were bad and all the way around was bad because you I accidentally got get it on my skin whatever and it just right dried everything out and made everything horrible and what I learned from it is the patience of starting over you're going to have backslides you're going I do have really stressful weeks when I do bite my nails and um, I don't hate myself for it I just say okay I did it I'm going to do a manicure reset start again 
right and it happens and you have to like not feel like a failure for it you have to be just know that it happened try to identify what triggered it so that when that trigger comes up again like I told you I have certain triggers stuff being under my nails so I keep the nail brush uh, dry skin around my nails so if you know what starts that process you can address it and try to avoid it but you're never going to be perfect at anything right so <laughs> hi cat um, so they're it, just embracing the fact that hey I did it once I can do it again and I'm going to do it again and I have started doing it again you can see my nails are not horrid right now they're not as pretty as they were but they will be and that's the point I'm doing this video that's what I wanted to share that you can overcome anything and even when you backslide you can overcome it again Okay, guys, I guess this video is long enough, and I apologize for that, but I hope that you've learned something, and um, I know your time is valuable, so I appreciate you spending it with me. Have a lovely day. Bye.